Welcome back to the Red Nice Diaries RPG podcast. Hi. And today we're going to be giving top 10 tips for running your first session of a new system. Okay, so we've all been in that situation where you've decided to take the GMing reins and run a game but it's your first time running a particular system. Now that could be like you're an old hand at GMing and you're just trying like a different game, mm. or it could be it's the first time you've actually GMed. And I know we've both done it, and like the that first sort of time you run any system, even if you've been GM for ages, can be quite nerve-wracking. So we're going to give you top 10 tips to help hopefully make things go a little bit more smoothly. Tip number one is choose a system that suits your style of gaming and the amount of prep time you've got available. And you should be trying to be realistic about this. I mean, we'd all love to have endless time to sort out our prep, but it doesn't happen. You know, work gets in the way, real life yeah. gets in the way. And some systems can be quite involved and like more preps required or you end up having to improvise lots of stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but I'd personally advise people just make it easy on the second. Mm-hmm. If you've only got a limited amount of prep time, maybe go for a slightly more simpler well, system. Yeah, this is one of the reasons that I chose Fate for my game because I can basically write three bullet points and have a session there. Yeah. And anything else that I have time to do, I can expand upon. And that's it, exactly. So it's all about about finding a system that suits the amount of time you have available and how comfortable you are with either doing lots of prep or improvising things off the cuff. Tip number two, read through the system you've chosen. Now this may sound obvious, but make sure you've read through at least the main rules bit of your new system. It's easier in games that have a single consistent mechanic, so like Fate Mm -hmm. or even things like D&D, 5th edition, where you've got the D20 plus your attribute try and beat a certain number if you've got a one consistent mechanic then even if you're not sure of the exact rules you can fall back on that so you can always make a skill test in fate core or you can always make an attribute test in D, and that'll sort of get you through yeah um there's nothing more frustrating as a player who knows a system than a gm that hasn't read a rule properly or doesn't understand the rule system so it's always worth making sure that you understand how it works yeah, and this rolls on to our next point, point three. Make notes of any odd rules that are likely to crop up. So, not so much in games that have consistent rules, but there's always like the odd little rule here or there that's a bit of an oddball one like, that doesn't crop up. If you know you're going to need a certain rule in your game, write it down on like a post stick or an index card or a piece of paper, whatever you want to use. But if you know that your game, like say you're running a D&D game, and you know that one part of it is a tense climb up a cliff, just jot down those like rules for falling damage because you're probably going to need them. This is where GM screens come from. It's why they were such a thing before like tablet computers became available. Yeah, it's just the convenience of having all those charts, isn't it? Yeah, just those little rules on post-it notes stuck on the screen of your computer can make all the difference. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so point four... Make sure your players are aware this is your first time running the system. Obviously, there are going to, there is going to be the odd knobhead out there, but most people <laughs> are genuinely just want to turn up to a game to have fun and enjoy themselves. If you say to them, "Look, guys, I'm going to run this game tonight," but you know, if I sort of stutter and start a bit, it's my first time running this game. Most players will try and help you out. They'll certainly understand that it's not going to be 100% perfect and polished as a session. And if your players are fine with that, that just takes a little bit of pressure off your shoulders as a GM. Well, I certainly find it does anyway. Number five, if you have a player who is more experienced with the system or is happy looking at rules, don't be afraid to use them as a resource. And I've done this in quite a few games where I've had... I know I've got other players who know the rules and they've got the books. I did it in a recent Vampire 5th Edition session. I've only run a couple of sessions of it. I knew Johannes had got to the book, so we got to a point where we had to determine whether someone was going to lose humanity because they'd caused the accidental death of someone in the game. But rather than hold the game up, I asked Johannes whether he'd look it up. We carried on with the rest of the scene, and then we got back to that a little bit later so the game wasn't slowed down. Yeah, that's always a good tip, whether it's the first game or not. If you're not quite sure where you're going with something, you can always move on with the scene and then come back to the rules afterwards. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
And I mean, especially if it's not something that's like immediately vital, you work out now. So obviously, if it's a, if it's a case where it's a rule where a player character's going to die or something, you might have to slow down and look it up. But if it's just like, oh, they're going to be a minor alteration on their character sheet, carry on and then come back to it later. It's about impacting the story and impacting the drama of the scene. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter whether that character is dead or alive for the other characters to be upset about it, react to it, finish the combat while you look up whether they've been incapacitated or killed until another character can get to them and do something about it. And the time that that takes can be the time that they look up the rule. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay, so on to point number six. Whatever genre or setting you're running, it can help to have some music or images to get your players in the correct frame of mind. And now, if occasionally you, you have to stop and start or you have to look something up, Part of the problem with that is that the player's attention can wander a bit. The temptation is to start like cracking some jokes and the pace of the game just sort of gets ruined. So anything you can do to help keep people sort of in the mindset of whatever setting you're doing is good. So if you've got like some not, some music playing in the background or you've maybe got a few images or you've got some maps or something like that, it all helps keep the player's attention focused on the game. Another thing to encourage in those sorts of situations is encourage the in-character chat, the in-character banter. Quite often in my game, when I'm not quite sure where to go with the rules or something, because we've got a Betazoid character, I'll just go, oh, Betazoid character, do a roll. And then I'll turn to one of the other characters and go, how are you feeling about this? And yeah. that'll give me five minutes to fill uh, it in uh, as they if, discuss that. Even without having like an empath <laughs> or a telepath or anything like that, it's... V- it's one of like my favourite tricks. Like if someone's maybe not getting as, as involved in the game as they might do, and they've not done anything for a little bit, you can turn to them and you just go, oh yeah, what's your character's thoughts on what's going on? And like let them have a little bit of spotlight time if they want that. Uh, but as you say, it can also be very handy, because while they're describing that, you've got like a few minutes to quickly like, look up in the rule book, whatever you need to look up. So let's move on to point seven, which is keep your first session sim and now i i prefer to run campaigns myself so the temptation is always to start off with some grand sort of epic scale campaign but if it's your first session for a game and you might run one session of it and go actually i didn't really enjoy running that game there's no point putting loads of effort in to make a massive mm-hmm. campaign start small start with like a simple scenario two or three encounters maybe and a little bit of socializing and a bit of talking to npcs you can always expand on that later and if you do, if you keep it small and you decide not to come back to the game, you've not wasted all that time and effort. Absolutely. First session, if you want it to be like a long running game, or even yeah. if you want it to be like a half dozen session campaign, all you need to do in the first session is put the player characters together in a group that will work with each other. Beyond that, anything else is a bonus and add as much as you can into it to make it fun. Yeah. But don't worry about all the like fiddly details because you're going to want some input off the players of that as well. They're going to want to build the world a bit just yeah. as you do. But I mean, as well, if you if you don't get overly worried about oh, how, what characters are they going to play? How are we going to get the characters together? If you're really worried about that bit, just skip it. Let's say your first let's say your first scenario is mm-hmm. you've been hired by someone to steal the crown jewels off a noble or whatever. Just have the player group start and say, like, right, have them start in the middle of the action. Have the, so in media res, as it's called. Just have them start and say, right, you're a group of thieves, you've been hired, you're trying to steal these crown jewels, and then let them backfill how they met and whatever. You can always do flashbacks and stuff like that later. Just do what it takes to get them to the, the fun bit of the first session, and then anything else is negotiable afterwards, I suppose. So point eight is schedule a break during your session and don't be afraid to ask for a few minutes if you need it. Now, one of the things I've started doing recently is scheduling like a sort of semi-formal break halfway through the session so people can go and get drinks, they can use the conveniences, etc. 
And because people know that there's going to be a break in the centre of the session, they're much less likely to suddenly, like, halfway through an encounter, go, like, oh, sorry, hold on a second, I've got to go and get this. Sorry, hold on a second, I've got to go and get that. Because they know that, well, I'll just hang on for another half an hour and then I'm going to get a break anyway. Mm -hmm. And I normally go for, like, a sort of 10, 15-minute break and that gives people plenty of time to stretch their legs, look away from the screen for a bit. Yeah. And then you can all come back refreshed, you know, you've got your drinks, etc., and you can all jump in. And if you pause it at a moment where it's just about, it's like an exciting moment, it's just about to kick in then when everyone comes back you've given them a little bit of time to think about how they want to respond so to use our ridiculous crown jewels example let's say you've got to the point where they've just grabbed the crown jewels they're just about to go out the alarm goes off the guards come running in have your break there mm -hmm. then they've got time to think about it also to sort of get themselves worked up a bit and sort of think about what they're going to do kick straight back in with the action and you as soon as you get back in everyone's in an interesting scene you haven't got to try and like build up the pace again mm-hmm also, if you're running at your first session and you really do need to look up a role in a book or you need to reference something, just be honest and upfront to the players about it and say, look, guys, sorry, I just need a couple of minutes to quickly look this up and then we'll move on. And if you've been honest with them, most players are absolutely fine with this. And as Hannah was saying earlier, you can always like, ask them what the characters think about what's going on. You can always get them talking to an NPC or something like that, which will like fill up a little bit of time whilst you're looking up whatever it is that you want. Point number nine, if you can't remember a rule and you're worried about interrupting the flow of a session, be upfront about it with the players again. Just make a ruling and move on. And when I say make a ruling, what I mean is look at the sort of core mechanic of the game, whether that's D20, World of Darkness, Fate, whatever it is. Make a ruling that seems consistent based on that and then just move on. You can always check in the rule book the, the official ruling afterwards. And as long as it's not a life or death for their character situation most players will be fine with it as long as they understand what's going on so yeah this is something that i do quite often um i'm not quite sure where something should go generally speaking i turn it over to the player group and i say so i could do this i could do this i could do this which way do you guys want the story to go? Yeah, absolutely. Get get the players involved in that and then they're invested in whatever decision's been made. And when you do look at like, the actual proper roles afterwards, again, be open about it with the players and say, oh yeah, that thing that happened last session, I've looked at the official role and this is what should have happened. I've made it, sorry about that guys, I've made a note of it and we're going to do it like by the official roles going forward. But obviously the ruling stands for that session. So, and like I said, most players, if you're honest about it, They'll understand because, as we recommended earlier, you'll have told them that this is your first time running the game, so they're not expecting it to be 100% perfect. Which neatly dovetails onto our final point, point 10. One of the most important in my mind, don't be too hard on yourself or overanalyze your performance in the first session. I've, I've seen loads of people doing this online where they're like oh i ran my first star wars session yesterday or oh, i ran my first uh, call of cthulhu session or DD fifth edition session yesterday and oh i'm not i'm not sure about it oh a few things went wrong and you know i'm not sure, really sure if i'm cut out for it there is never going to be any session that is like an actually a properly run session that is going to be 100 percent perfect yeah this is things where things like um harm and quest really mess with you because that's not what that session really looks like. When they give you that half hour of perfect role play, what they actually did was like three hours of grueling game session and edit it down, just like any other reality show. Yeah. And if you had a fun evening with your friends, you ran a great session. If that session included some interesting story or some cool traps or some other entertaining bits that people thought was cool great if not and people turned up and you had fun together you won that's yeah. the only way you can win at role play it doesn't matter if the players run rampant through your setting they ignore what you've written they they kill like hannah says they kill or shag all the npcs <laughs> as long as you're enjoying yourself your players are enjoying yourself by all means get feedback but if you're all enjoying yourself you have done a great job so 
We hope you've enjoyed that episode, our top 10 tips for running your first session of a new system. If you want to get in touch with us, you can leave a voicemail message using the SpeakPipe website. There's a link in the description of this episode. Or you can send us an email. The address is rddrpgpodcast at gmail.com. Until we see you next time, take care, stay safe, and keep gaming. Bye. Tip number two, read through the system you've chosen. Chosen. Now you have something to put in the bloopers.